May the grace and the peace of Jesus Christ be with each of you. Thank you so much. It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord. And normally we have our sister Donette. But tonight she's taking a break and she's with us. And we will continue to keep her in prayer as we worship together. Before we begin our worship service, I want to tell you where the bathrooms are. Out this door to the right and the next right and our newly established bathrooms, redesigned, redeveloped, are right up the courtyard. Amen, can we say amen to that? Our reconstruction project is coming right along and we're excited that you can be a part of what God is doing at New Hope Church. Now, of course, we want you to refer to our e-newsletter so that you can learn about all the wonderful things happening at our church. Um, that's where you can get the information. And if you are not receiving the e-newsletter, you can let one of the ushers know in the back on your way out, and they will make sure that you begin to get that in your email. Our theme for this month is freed up to love, freed up to live the Easter life. Because we know we have moved from reaffirmation to resurrection, and we are headed to revival with Pentecost. Amen? Tonight's community voice will be our sister, Margot Malone, who is going to bring us an inspirational message. Amen? Amen. And of course, tonight, we want to welcome, give a big welcome to Orange County Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta. Amen. We are so glad you are here. Now, on a personal note, I have on all this blue and white, but I am a pink and green girl. Amen. <laughs> I'm so glad that a part of the Divine Nine can come and worship with us tonight, and we pray that God will bless you and glorify you, and we thank God for all the work that you are doing in the community. Without further ado, I, we will begin to open up our worship um, with our sister, Rashawn. Amen. Good evening, New Hope family and friends. And a special good evening to my Soras of DST. Thank you all for joining us this evening. So will you all please rise? So as you know, this is how we enter into our worship, but especially today based on our theme, we want to make sure we enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And so after each refrain that I say, you will say, thank you, Lord. Y'all want to try it first? Thank you, Lord. Very good. <laughs> Easter is the gift that sets us free. Thank you, Lord. Resurrection has given us a renewed spirit. Thank you, Lord. We are freed up to sing. We are freed up to praise with power and to experience God's presence. Thank you, Lord. We are freed up to be a community 
of greater love, peace, and justice. Thank you, Lord. We offer ourselves as living witnesses to worship like we mean it and praise like we know it. So remain standing as we move into our song of praise. Thank you, Lord. Very good.
That's all I have to say. Actually, I would ask you to please uh, stand again, if you will. I'm sorry to do this in all this heat. <laughs> Just calm yourselves down. It's sweaty in here, but God's got us. Dear God in heaven, our praise is real. And so is our desire to live for you. We need help with this, of course, because many times we get in our own way. We make choices that are not sometimes good for us. We judge when we should have compassion. We carry resentment when we should seek to forgive. Lord, please free us from the pain and the agony that we most often create ourselves. Forgive us for the sins that we have committed. Through your forgiveness, O oh Lord, we are freed up to live like Easter never ends. And we are freed up to grow in gratefulness. Father, we thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your grace. And we thank you, Father God, for your forgiveness. In your name we pray. Amen. Now you may go into your private closet and spend time with God and you may be seated. Mark, can you play a little more of that just a little softly for just a minute? Because, friends, here is the good news. As we see, as we see and as we feel God in our presence, 
Thanks be to God, he has heard us. We have received his goodness. We are now forgiven and freed up to live and give of ourselves with new hope and new faith that only comes from God through Jesus Christ. God loved the world so much that he gave us his son, Jesus Christ. Why? Because he came to take away our sins. I don't know about you, but this reassurance and affirmation that restores the soul and gives us all the more reason to praise him. Just know this, people. God has forgiven your sins. How blessed are we? Amen. And as we prepare to pass the peace of Christ, we invite Margaret and Melinda to come forward uh, to work on the Scrabble board while we greet each other in peace, in love, and in compassion. Now remember this, when the music stops, where are you supposed to be? Back in your seats. <laughs> now let us pass the feast of Christ. <laughs> Friends, you know, if you go back to the mid-70s, early 70s, many of you remember Soul Train. And the, yeah, and the scramble board. Well, New Hope has its own soul train, and that's our scramble board over here. And Margaret and Melinda have reminded us, they unscramble the words, we are freed up to share love. Amen? Amen. I'm so pleased to tell you that in this church, we have three women who are in seminary. One is at New York University Theological Seminary, and that is Sheila Hill, who's working on her doctorate in theology. And we have Donette Jeffers, who is at Fuller's Theological Seminary, working on her Master's of Theology. And we also have Margot Malone, who is at Canyon Theological Seminary work. So we're, we're blessed that we can walk with our sisters as they follow the call of God. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen. And tonight, our testimony, our community voice is going to come from Margot Malone. And after that, we will hear from Reverend Dr. Don Oliver, who is going to share a prayer and bring our scripture. Let the church say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One more time with a hand clap. Praise the Lord. I'm back. <laughs> As the pastor said, my name is Margot Malone. And most of the time you'll find me in the back with Bas Baxter as part of the media team. I'm from uh, Cleveland, Ohio area where I was born and raised in the church. I was married, got divorced, have one son and five grandchildren. I have one brother and two sisters, all of which still reside in Ohio. Okay, fuck out. <laughs> I've been in California since 1982. Now, I've been attending New Hope for about eight, nine months now. I came from another church in Santa Ana where I served as the church missionary and the media ministry liaison. During COVID and much prayer, I was given the release to come to New Hope. So I have hitched my caboose to this train, and I like where it's taken me. Do, do. <laughs> now, I'm not up here to be a bleeding heart or use this as a therapy session, but just to tell you a little bit about who I am in Christ. I do love the Lord, and I am still a work in progress, but so are many of you. As you can see, I'm not a spring chicken. But last year, I decided to go back to school to get my BA. It took me about three decades to complete because I was so afraid of math. 
But you know what? At the end of the same three decades, guess what? I still had to take the math. <laughs> so getting the degree was something I always wanted to achieve, and it was on my bucket list. So I prayed. I signed up for statistics, armed myself with tutors, and passed the class with an A, no less. <laughs> I graduated last May. So currently I am attending Grand Canyon University working on a master's in Christian ministry. Now in 2 Timothy verse 15 it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm learning and growing so much and I hope I can be an adjunct and a service to the Lord and new hope. Pastor Janetta has been the bomb in helping me while I'm working through this journey. So why am I telling you all this? Because I want you to know it's not too late for whatever dreams and aspirations you might have. The only thing stopping you is you. Whenever you set out to do something, you're going to get the naysayers, the doubters, and the haters. And that's just family. <laughs> Not to mention the negative thoughts we fill our heads with. I know. <laughs> That's what I did until I decided to stop listening to anyone and anything and just really focus on what the Lord had to tell me. It's okay to be afraid and doubtful. Just talk to the Lord and he'll guide your footsteps. That's what I'm doing. It's a faith walk. Now, I'm not sure where my studies will lead me, but Job 8, verse 7 says, And though your beginning was small, your latter days will be very great. I am excited about my spiritual growth, and I am open to whatever the Lord has in store. By the way, I'll be graduating in October 2023. <laughs> I am glad to be a part of the New Hope family. So pray for me, and I will pray for you. Amen? Amen. God bless. Let the church say amen. amen. It's good to see all of you. And I'm going to take this mask off so that you can hear me. Ah, Bonnerice. <laughs> yes. Um, to start with, let us pray. Bless us with your word, Lord. Empower us and help us see ourselves in you. Remove all distractions and give us open minds and hearts to hear you and follow you. We seek to be changed and we thank you for faith and inspiration. In Christ's name, let us all say amen. amen. I want to, uh, to prepare us for the scripture reading. And, uh, but I need to make a statement before that. Uh, our seminarians, let's see, the seminarians, would you all raise your hand? One of the hurdles that you all have to jump through as students in seminary and having spent some time teaching at the seminary level, that hoop is Koine Greek. Have you heard of Koine Greek? And so sometimes when we are reading the scripture, in order to get at what that scripture means, it's helpful to have some understanding of the language that the New Testament was written in. And so I'm going to, uh, to do that in preparation for our scripture text. And as I told pastor, this will help to prepare the way. You know, John talks about preparing the way of the Lord. <laughs> So we want to prepare that way. And the passage uh, that we have before us is John chapter 13, 
verses 31 through 36. And I want you to listen for two words. When I get to this scripture, I want you to listen for two words. The first word is glory or glorify, glorification, some form of that word glory will be in the first two verses. And the Koine Greek word is doxa. If you ever hear the word orthodox, it means right believing. Doxa also means glory. To believe, the overall theme of the Gospel of John is about believing. Uh, it is used five times in verses 31 through 32, and our text is 13 verses 31 through 35, but the first two verses are 31 and 32, and I want you to count the number of times you hear that word glory. The second word is love, agape love, unconditional positive regard for Jesus and for one another. It will be the focus for Pastor Goodjoin's message. The word love is also used uh, a number of times, four times to be exact, in verses 34 and 35. And I want you to count them as you hear them. The first two and the second two verses are held together by verse 33, where the writer of John refers to us as his children. So this writer wants us to hear something. He wants us to respond to this notion of belief. Do you believe, he is saying in effect. The point is that believing in a person who has suffered and died for you and I, and who has been resurrected from the dead for you and I, is someone who loves you. The person is someone you are not likely to forget, and that is Jesus Christ. So how many people in your life have given of themselves in the name of the one in whom they believe so that you and I might also believe in God and believe in one another? The root meaning of believing is love, and that becomes another coincidence, literally to be love or to be loving, a loving person, is to be a believing person. So I want you to listen for God's word to you again, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. The lesson, when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the son of man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. 32, if God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. And then we come to that middle scripture, little children, that's us. I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot go. And that requires a lot of reflection. Verse 34, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. So we're going from glory to love. Verse 35, our final verse, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for another. So may God bless you as you spend time contemplating, emphasis on the word contemplating his word.
We just thank you, merciful and holy God, that your hand never leaves us, that in the midst of our storms, our uncertainties, in the times when dreams seem to fall apart, we know that you are the one who is putting your healing hands upon us, mending the broken places, giving us reason to praise, giving us reason to live. And for that, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Your word takes us there from glory to glory to love to love. Everything you command has been given to us to manifest in this world and we just give praise to God. Can we praise God for the choir ministering to us tonight? For Don ministering to us tonight. For Margo ministering to us tonight. I mean the word has already gone out. I, I just love it when we get a, like a, a triple dose of God's holy word. Amen. God is so good. You got a good lesson in preparation for this word tonight. May God bless it that we would walk away from here knowing how we can love all the more and how we can receive that love. I was struck by what Margot shared. 30-year dream. Sometimes she didn't know if she was going to make it. Sometimes she didn't know, you know, but she had this dream, this aspiration. I want a college degree. I've got to face this mountain called statistics. My dream will not be shattered. It kind of makes me think about the Harlem Renaissance and Langston Hughes. I think Langston Hughes would identify with what you were saying, my sister. I think he would identify with it to the extent that he had this dream that his poetry and his artistry could, 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 could build itself beyond Harlem, but the world kept rejecting him. And so he wrote a poem called Harlem. He wanted to, he loved, I, I believe he loved Harlem, but he wanted, he believed that mainstream America was a home that he could proclaim and he could use his art to lift a nation and he continued to get rejection. So he wrote this poem called Harlem. And he asked the question that maybe Margot has asked over 30 years of going for an aspired goal. 
that we have all maybe asked. He asked this in his poem. What, 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 what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotted meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it just explode? I think it brings to light the reality of mental stress and frustration. It brings it into the forefront of something that we're all too familiar with in society today. I contend that Langston Hughes must have been reading Proverbs 13, 12. That simply says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But desire fulfilled is a tree of life. You were given the tree of life in the reading and the, and the study of the word. You were given the tree of life in a woman who said, I never gave up. What if we change that word of dream to love? What happens when love is deferred? When love is denied? When love is rejected? What happens when love doesn't love you back? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotted meat or crust over like a sugary sweet? Maybe it sags like a heavy load or does it just explode? I have an answer from God's word about God's love. We're not talking about a knick-knack, paddywhack, romanticized kind of love. <laughs> Jesus came so that our love could manifest a new day and a new promise. So that love could steady our hearts in the walk of 11 African Americans who were shot to death in Buffalo, New York today. Love still lives and love still conquers. Jesus came so our love could thrive and give life in the presence of defeat and disappointment. So that love could draw water out of the deserts of despair. Jesus' love is a gift from God that frees us up. To share love, to dream and live for justice, for hope, for peace that awakens the spirit in us to be the very faith community that makes love an action word in the sentence called our life. Life filled with its many mountain highs and valley lows that stirs our conscience and compels us to look out for one another anyway to trust God in the presence of our enemies anyway. God's declaration of a new commandment in John 13, 34 to 35 is truly this. Jesus said, I am giving you this commandment to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also love one another. As I go from glory to glory to God, I pass down this love that you would use it as a mantra as you encounter unloving situations. And everybody will know that you are my disciples if you share this agape presence, this agape love. I, I was talking to a man yesterday. This man told me how much another man gets on his nerves. He was very clear about it. He just gets on my nerves, pastor. But he can't stop me from loving him. He's making love the action word in the sentence called his life. The command to love one another draws us into Jesus' covenant with God. You see, Jesus urges the disciples to be patient with one another in the days ahead. Jesus' command has a tone that we all can see as, 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 a, as a plea, an earnest plea to care for one another, to forgive one another in the wake of Jesus' death 
to set free, to abide in the Jesus way of life. Now, we can look at Moses' law. We can look at Deuteronomy 6.5, and Moses mandated the necessity of loving our brothers and sisters as ourselves. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ loved us far more than he loved himself. Otherwise, if he didn't, Jesus would not have descended into our humiliation for his original exaltation to God could have taken him from glory to glory. Jesus could have, could, could have lived a different life, but he underwent and went down into the pits of hell for our sakes. He touched the bitterness of death for us. He submitted to the beatings, to the shame, to the dear revision. He, he, he took it all. So many things too numerous to mention. Joseph Bessler, this commentator says, Jesus brought a new love that goes on and on and on and goes further than that and keeps going on and on and on. And we must use the presence and the power of God's love to stand in the footsteps of the one who stood in the presence of accusers and enemies who declared love as the engine in the resolution to give justice, to speak with wisdom, to march and stand for equality and equity while we denounce the very fabric of hatred, while we fight for equity in health care, education, housing, food supply. Love can't be deferred. While we face economic disparity across this nation, love can't be put aside. I, I, I can't do what I do up here without love. I ask God, and I promise you, every day I ask God to fill me up with the love of Jesus Christ because in my flesh I might cuss somebody out. I can't do it without love. As a black woman preacher, I can't do it without love. I, I can't tell you how many glass ceilings are real in my life and how faith is real in my life and that God shows me that I have to break down every barrier that says I am less than. I have to break down every witness that says that I am nobody. I have to break down every single fence that says your theology isn't strong enough. You're not educated enough. You're not what you I have to break it down. My hands are shattered by the shards of glass that I want to go through. But it's not about me. It's about us. Our knuckles may be raw from the shatterings of rejection, but we are healed by his stripes. That we would keep fighting for freedom fighting for glory, fighting for humanity, fighting for love, fighting for love with one another. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are set free to share God's love. And that was worked out over there so that we could activate it over here and go out there and tell the world about a Jesus man who has taught us how to love and commanded it. You see? We must trust God in working things out for good. It's a reminder that we don't take each other or the community for granted, that we don't sweat the small things because the big thing is the reawakening of love. We have moved in this year. We started in January on this theme of reaffirmation, and then we moved to resurrection. And when we get ready to go into that sanctuary that we have been building for the love of God to build up community, we will move into revival, a Holy Spirit revival. Because our humility will never be overrated when it is rated in the arms and the presence of a loving God who has commanded that we move from glory to glory to love to love and find ways to share love and give love. It is a reminder that in a world filled with violence, mass shootings, racial hate, that we must step into the bare, boon, bare bones truth that peace is not overrated either. The restoring of someone's dignity is tied to the very way in which we make our worship and our Easter life that did not end, like I said last week, Easter didn't end when the honey baked ham got gone. <laughs> it 
Easter penetrates the love that we have to give to one another in all kinds of trying times. What do you think our children need to see other than examples of love manifested in the midst of hell? Yes, yes. While we may face many challenges and choices, we're still redeemed by this love. While we face loss, we are still saved and invited to carry Easter worship, Easter love, Easter witness into spring, winter, summit, summer, and fall. He dedicated his life to following the will of God. He showed acts of love. Jesus is love. Hey, Mark, did you know that? Jesus is love. And he won't let you down. Amen. I know he's love. This is our Jesus, who has given us the example of love. He faced a pandemic, a pandemic of political disease, and he died and was crucified, but death couldn't hold him. He came out of the hardship of hell. He transcended the despair of death. He overcame the insecurity of isolation. He lived out our troubles, and he rose for our redemption. And he has made us witnesses to the power of salvation. Love wins the day. Love wins the moment. Love wins this week. Yeah. While we still expect justice to happen on this side of heaven, our Redeemer still lives. And our Redeemer has paved the way for us to journey together through, through good times and bad times so that we can be the witnesses of love, the disciples of God's promise, and we will no longer take the church or worship or each other for granted. He's called us to be witnesses to a new awakening, to live out the testimony and to make love the action word that follows us all the days of our lives with greater prayer, that's what you need to do. You want to know, okay, what's your takeaway here today? Love brings greater prayer. You are commanded to use your prayers as a vehicle of loving, to walk in deeper connection with God through the power of what love is, and to share this inspiration with others. And all we have to do is rejoice in the Lord and the commandment that when you show this love, you show Jesus walking in the light from glory to glory. So I'm going to share a story with you. And yes, you all can really start playing Jesus' is love. I tried to throw the hint, but the hint didn't catch. So we just... <laughs> because Jesus is love. And I'm not going to mess this song up by trying to sing it to y'all. Mm -mm. But I do want to share a story with you. And some of you, some of you know this story, and some of you don't. But I've shared it before. There was a, a young man, and he was roaming the desert. And he came across a crystal clear pool of water. And the water was so delicious that he filled his leather container to the brim. So, and then he filled up another one to the brim so he could bring it back to the tribal elder. And after a four-day journey of sloshing and walking and, and getting back to the village, he was so excited to walk in and offer that elder that water. And the elder received him, and he took one of the canteens, and he took a deep, slow drink and let it drip down his chest and into his mouth and over his ears. And he smiled, and he said, ah. Oh, this is the best and most excellent water. And the young man returned to his home with a happy heart. Well, later, the elder let another person taste the water. And he took the water and he took one sip. He couldn't even get a sip in. He was like, Ugh, Ugh. Why, why would you even say this is the nastiest water I've ever had? It's got bugs in it, it's fermented. You see, over four days in that old leather canteen, that water had become real stale. And the man challenged the elder and said, why would you pretend to like this water? You need to be telling the truth. And the elder replied, you tasted the water. I tasted the gift. 
You tasted the water. I tasted the love. The love that commands you to love one another on the worst day of your life to love one another when you prefer to keep and hold on to resentment to love your dreams because your dreams have not been deferred by the love and the cross of Jesus Christ to hold on to that love to taste and know that the Lord God is so good and we are set free today my brothers and sisters to share this love to live this love, to be this love, to be inspired by this love, to find somebody right now and just tell them you matter because God loves you and so do I. That's the active pursuit of God's love and community that we would not just sit here and learn, but that we would actively engage it. There is somebody around you. Let me tell you what's going on right now. You don't know. I'm going to tell you. There is somebody, somebody to your left is going through a hell that you don't even imagine. Somebody sitting to your right, they, they're not going to tell you. It hurts. Somebody in front of you just needs a little love. And somebody sitting behind you, they smile all the time. But they could write a poem about what happens when love is deferred. Does it just become a syrupy sweet? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm concerned about suicide in this country. An African American woman three months ago jumped from a New York hotel room, her apartment, nine feet to her, nine stories to her death. A Southern University sister last week drove her car into a river. People in this community are struggling with mental illness. I'm not going to tell you that love, all you need is love. But I'm going to tell you what we need is to belong in a community that says, I will suffer with you, be vulnerable with you, walk with you, dare to even be quiet if I don't have the answers for you. Because that's the Jesus who loves us and commands us in the worst of times and the best of times to give out the water that is profoundly flavored with the taste of love. I want to give you just two minutes to turn to somebody. And, and we have an obligation and a responsibility. We have an obligation and a responsibility to make sure everybody gets a touch. A touch of, I just want you to know you matter. I just want you to know you're loved. I dare you to be so bold tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. We got two minutes. Amen. Go on and do your thing. In the name of love, amen. Jesus, walk on. Even, even the heat can't stop the love. The love is real. 
I just want to share a few announcements with you. Many of you are aware of the Gospel Voices of OC. It's the Juneteenth celebration and several people in our choir and in our children's choir will be singing at the Gospel Voices of OC on Sunday, June 19th at 4 p.m. We invite you to come out to see all of the churches involved and they would include Second Baptist, Friendship, Christ Our Redeemer, New Hope, Trinity, all singing. They, it's going to be beautiful. They've got dancers, singers, percussionists, drum lines coming, and you can get your tickets by going online to the Musco Center for the Arts, and it will give you more information. Amen. I just want to share three praise reports with you. The Orange County Health Alliance through the United Way has given us a $10,000 grant to work through health equity in Orange County. We praise God for that because our church is about health and wellness. And at this point, we started in October and we have now, Anita, what's the number? 39,000 mills given out through this church since October. We praise God for the opportunity on Wednesdays to feed the community. We will also be having a countywide health fair on June 25th. Students from the School of Medicine at UCI will be hosting this event along with students from the UCI Nursing School. So come out, learn about, get, get to know about your health and I see it as a win-win. We're supporting the students as they grow and we're supporting the community. The Calvin Institute of Worship has given us a $15,000 grant to support our youth worship and mission. We just got the check last week, amen. And, the, and, and I'm most excited about this. New Hope, along with Second Baptist and Friendship Baptist and Christ our Redeemer, we wrote a grant together with Second Baptist being the, the central core of that grant. But together we came up with a grant about health equity through the United Way's Population on Health and Equity Collective. And we have received the award that we have won, we have won. We have received a $200,000 grant, $200,000 grant to bring health equity to the African American community and to communities that are underserved. I praise God that our churches can come together in this kind of love. It's not really about the money, it's about the love that we will give out to the community. And speaking of love, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, we love you. And I see you, because Barbara Bonneries is my neighbor, so I see you a lot. And we see your work, we see your heart, and we thank you for what you do to build up scholarship and equity in the community through your hard work. We, we just wanna thank you. And our treasurer, Maxine Jackson, has a special presentation for you tonight. We're so grateful that you chose us to worship with men. Thank you. Can't see with my glasses, can't see without them. <laughs> it's a problem today. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Maxine Jackson. I'm a member of New Hope Presbyterian Church. And on behalf of New Hope Presbyterian Church, we welcome Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated of Orange County alumni chapter to our service today. We thank you for choosing New Hope as your place to fellowship today. New Hope is a church where everyone matters, and we want you to know 
that the members of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated Orange County Alumni Chapter matter and the work you do in our community matters to our church. Please accept this monetary gift of $300 as a token of our appreciation and support for your community care and programs. Please come back and join us again. We hope you enjoyed our service today. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank you for this generous donation to our scholarship fund. I want to um, thank Pastor Goodjoin for having us here. I think I speak on behalf of everyone when I say we feel very welcome and loved. We also have a little presentation for you. I grew up in a Southern Baptist church, and they said in times like these, you need an anchor. The church has always been our anchor. So on behalf of my sorors and the Orange County Alumni Chapter, Delta Sigma Theta. We would like to present this little love token for you. It's $750 that we have collected here, and we appreciate you so much. Thank you, Saraz. Thank you so much. We certainly thank you so much. God bless you. It's what a beautiful, beautiful way to share love in the community. Amen. Amen. I am moved to tears. I want to share with you, I want to invite Mr. John Walton up so he can tell you about BBB and what it means to you. You can go right there. Yeah. Hi, John. I will be brief because I want to go see the new church. Uh, I've been giving out these bracelets. You all, a lot of you all have them. Stands for BBB, which is stands for Be Cool, Be Smart, Be Alive, which is a nonprofit program designed to teach teenagers how to de-escalate when dealing with the police and each other. So it's coming soon. Uh, look up Be Cool, Be Alive to get more information. Uh, if you want to help, you can become a volunteer. Just talk to me and give your name, and I would appreciate. It. Thank you. John is doing a wonderful thing and we want to stand by you and support. And I'm glad you said what you said because our sanctuary is almost complete. The bathrooms are finished, the administration building's finished, we're working on the fellowship hall, the kitchen is finished back there. But if you desire to see the new sanctuary, we don't have the chairs in yet, they're here, we just haven't put them in. The doors of that sanctuary will be open for you to see our sanctuary after church. We also want to thank the men. They feed us every week. It is such a beautiful thing. I don't know what's on the menu tonight, but we thank the men's ministry for always serving us and nurturing us with food on Saturday nights after worship. Let's talk about offering and giving. Giving is love. Our ushers are in the back and they are ready to receive your gifts of love. And you can give those gifts of love by going straight to them after service with a love token, or you can uh, go online and give to New Hope, or you can mail in a check. No matter what way you do it, just know that we are taking love into the community every time we give back to God with our money and our finances. That's our love. It's one aspect of it. And tonight, I have a basket for you. You know, sometimes in churches they pass around the basket so that they can get the love money. Tonight, we're passing around the basket to give you the love. In this basket is a love note for everyone. So we will pass it out as we prepare to depart. Take one out and pass it to the next person. Here is your love basket. Here is your love offering while you consider offering your love to God. Let us pray. Merciful God, bless this church. Bless its desire to never let dreams get deferred, but to walk in the commandment of love as we give of ourselves, as we empty our pockets and fill up 
the basket of salvation with the money that helps us to grow, to give, to share, and to be all that we can be in community. Bless this offering. Bless its gifts that we may build your kingdom. In Christ's name, amen. You may rise to your feet as we prepare to depart. If there's anyone among us today who would desire more prayer, who wants to give your life to Christ, we're so thankful for our new members class. Thank you, Sister Sheila, for leading that new members class. We're excited about you who will be joining our church. If there's anyone here today that you know you need to give your life to Christ and you need more prayer during this time or right after church, just come on up. The deacons, the elders, the pastors in the room, the chaplains are ready to receive you. Amen. Amen. May the grace and the mercy and the peace of Christ be with each of you as we prepare to depart. Go out into the world sharing God's love, being about God's business. We will see you next week. Enjoy New Hope. God bless you.